Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video, as you'll have already seen from the thumbnail, is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is a Georgette, very lightweight, very drippy, perfect for a project like this. And for lining, my usual viscose foil. And on to the cutting out. This is my front, my fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch to mark my underarm and one at the top and bottom of the fold line. So I don't have any darts in this pattern, but I do have a little bit of ease here. And to make it easier to sew, I'm just going to reduce the length of that bottom edge. So to do that, I'm placing my finger at the back of my foot, catching the fabric as it comes through, using the longest stitch length on my machine, sewing within my seam allowance. And what that will do is create little wrinkles in the fabric, reducing the overall length of that bottom edge, which is exactly what I'm after. So now that that's done, I'm ready for my waist piece. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch at the top and bottom of the fold line. So that's that done. So now this piece is ready to be joined to my bodice, lining up those centre notches, lining up my side seams, my fabric is right sides together, and pinning. And stitching here at my 1cm seam allowance, back stitching to start, and back stitching to finish. So I finished that edge and given that seam a bit of a press. And this is how it looks. So happy with that. So now that that's done, I'm ready for my skirt. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch at the fold line on the waist. So I have one more pattern piece to add to this before I can join it to my bodice. So this is the pattern piece that is creating that handkerchief hem. I have four layers of fabric underneath this one, two for the front and two for the back. So that's that done. And here, just lining up that diagonal edge with my skirt. My fabric is right sides together and pinning. And of course I've done that on both sides and ready to stitch stitching to start at my 1cm seam allowance and back stitching to finish. So I finished that edge and given that seam a bit of a press and this is how it looks. And now that that's done I'm ready to join my bodice and skirt together at the waist. So lining up my notches, lining up my side seams, my fabric is right sides together and pinning and stitching here at my 1cm seam allowance, back stitching to start and to finish. So I just need to finish off that edge and give that seam a nice press, which you can see I've went ahead and done here. So that's my front, all fully prepped and ready to be added to my back at the shoulder. So on to the back. I have two layers of fabric underneath this pattern piece. A little notch to mark my underarm. So that's that done. And now just like the front, I have a waist piece I want to add. Again, two layers of fabric underneath this one. So that's that all cut out and ready to be added to my bodice. My fabric is right sides together, lining up my edges and pinning, stitching here at my 1cm seam allowance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So I've tidied up that edge and pressed out that seam. This is what I get. 
so happy with that. And now this piece is ready to be added to my skirt. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece, a notch to indicate the bottom of my zip, and now just like the front skirt I have that handkerchief piece I need to add to that diagonal edge. So just laying it over the top, right sides together, lining up my edges and pinning and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. That edge has been finished and pressed and this is how it looks. Nice and neat and tidy. And now that that's done, I'm ready to add my back skirt to my back bodice at the waist. My fabric is right sides together, lining up my edges and pinning, and stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So I've ran that edge through the overlocker, given that seam a good press, and this is how it looks. So that's my back prepped as far as I can at this stage and ready to be joined to my front at the shoulders. My fabric is right sides together, lining up my edges and pinning, stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. Of course I finished off my edges, pressed out my seams, which you can see here. So now I just want to stabilise the neckline and on this dress I've decided to use the selvage edge of my lining fabric for that. So just lining it up with the wrong side of my neckline, pinning in the centre and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start, stitching a couple of millimetres inside my seam allowance. And what this will do is add a little bit of support to the neckline but retain that gorgeous softness. And of course I do exactly the same on the other side. So that's my neckline all stable. I've trimmed off the excess. And now I want to do exactly the same thing with that centre back seam, just to support the zip. So lining up that selvage edge, wrong sides together with that centre back seam, starting at the neck with a back stitch, and finishing with a back stitch about an inch or so below my zip notch. So I've trimmed off the excess and after it's had a good press, this is how it looks. So that's as much as I can do on my outer for now. So on to the lining. So this is my back lining. I've got that same zip notch. The only difference here is instead of having the handkerchief hem, I just have a standard A-line shape. And for my back bodice, this is exactly the same as my outer and I've put it together in exactly the same way. So I've joined my waist piece, finished my edges and given it a press. So now to join this to my skirt. My fabric is right sides together, lining up my edges and pinning and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching to start and to finish. So those edges have been cleaned up, that seam's had a good press, and this is how it looks. So that's the prep work complete on my back. So now that that's done, I'm ready to join these pieces to my front at the shoulders. So this is my front lining, same thing here again. Rather than the handkerchief hem of the outer, I've just given myself an A-line shape. And then again for the bodice, exactly the same as the outer and put together in the same way. 
so now to join my bodice to my skirt at the waist. My fabric is right sides together, lining up my notches, lining up my side seams and pinning and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching to start and finishing with a back stitch. After my edges have been cleaned up and pressed, this is how it looks. So now this piece is ready to be joined to my back at the shoulders. So laying my back over the top, right sides together with my front, lining up those shoulder seams and pinning, and stitching at my one centimeter seam alliance, back stitching to start and finish. So I've cleaned up my seam edges, pressed, and now that that's done, my lining prep is complete and ready to be joined to my outer. So just laying it with my outer right sides together, lining up my neckline, my notches, my shoulder seams, and my center back pinning, and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam alliance taking this nice and easy. I want to maintain that beautiful curve of the neckline and finishing with a back stitch. So that's that done. So in preparation for understitching, I finished that edge on the overlocker. I've trimmed just the deepest area of that curve. So now to press. So just pressing the lining away from the outer fabric making sure that that trim seam alliance in underneath is butted up against the lining. I'll finish that pressing off camera and this is how it looks. So now to stitch right along that lining edge. So using a little bit of a longer stitch length, back stitching to start, sewing through the lining and that trim seam alliance in underneath, about a millimetre or two away from the outer fabric and this is just going to help that lining stay nicely tucked in underneath. Finishing with a back stitch. So that's had a good press and this is the result. So super happy with this. So that's my lining joined at the neckline. So next I want to join it at the arms. So I've just laid my fabric right sides together with the armholes, lined up the shoulder seam and lined up my notches, pinned and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam alliance and back stitching to finish. So I've ran that edge through the overlocker and now that that's done, I'm ready to pull the whole thing through to the right side. So just putting my hand between the outer fabric and lining fabric, picking up my back outer and back lining and pulling it all through the shoulder. So that needs a good press. So I'm just rolling the outer fabric just slightly to the outside, making sure my lining's tucked away in underneath. I'll finish that off camera and this is how it looks. Nice and neat and tidy. So happy with that. So that's my neckline and armholes all joined to my lining. So now for my side seams. So I've pulled my lining up out of the way and I'm just laying my back outer fabric over my front, lining up my underarm, lining up the seams of my waist, my edges, lining up my handkerchief piece at the bottom. And pinning. And I'm going to stitch starting at the handkerchief, coming back over to the side seam, right up to the underarm and then the whole way down the lining. Starting with a back stitch, 
at my one centimeter seam allowance, making sure my edges are lined up the whole way down over the underarm, down the lining side, and finishing at its hem with the back stitch. So that's the side seams of both my outer fabric and lining all joined up. I finished my edges and pressed out those seams and this is how it looks. And from the inside and I've completed that the whole way down including the handkerchief and you can see here just how that handkerchief is going to look super happy with this and while I was at the overlocker I've just ran my center back seam of both my outer fabric and lining through it that will just help me out when I come to put my zip in later on but for now I'm ready to close up that center back seam so just laying one side of the outer fabric over the other right sides together lining up my edges doing the same thing with the lining and pinning from the hem up to my zip notch. I'll sew that with a regular stitch length and then from there up to the notch on my bodice with the longest stitch length on my machine. Just tacking that part into place, I leave a little gap at the top and then for the lining, leaving that centre back seam open and stitching from the zip notch down to the hem using a regular stitch length. So starting with the back stitch at the hem of my outer fabric using that regular stitch length at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at my zip notch, adjusting my stitch length and continuing right up to the notch at the neck, finishing with a back stitch. So that's my outer fabric all ready for my zip. So for the lining, starting at the zip notch with a back stitch, sewing at my one centimeter seam allowance and finishing at the hem with a back stitch. So now I just need to press both of those seams out, which you can see I've went ahead and done here. So I have that little gap at the top of my outer fabric. My lining is completely open from the neckline down to the zip notch and it's had a good press. So now that that's done, I'm ready to add my zip. Using a standard conceal zip here, I'm just laying it right sides together with that center back seam, making sure that the zipper teeth are lined up right in the center of that seam. And then I'm just going to hand tack this into place for now. So using running stitches, attaching the zipper tape to the seam allowance. And I'll finish that off camera. Which you can see here. And now that that's done, I'm ready to remove those machine tacking stitches. And this preparation takes a little bit of extra work but I find that I can get all of my seams to match up just the way I want them to using this method. So that's my machine tacking stitches all removed. So now to sew my zip on permanently. So using my standard zipper foot, starting at the bottom of the zip with a back stitch, taking this nice and easy trying to sew as close to those zipper teeth as I can get and finishing at the top with a back stitch. So that's the first side complete and of course I'll do exactly the same to the other side which you can see here. So that seam's had a good press. So super happy with this. So now that my zip is all sewn in permanently I'm ready to attach the lining. So I'm just folding it over the top at the neckline, making sure my edges are lined up the whole way down and pinning. And when I've pinned, I've made sure that the excess zipper tape at the top is pulled out slightly beyond the seam. That will just give me a nice neat top to my zip and ready to stitch. 
back stitching to start, sewing at about half of my seam allowance here, taking this nice and easy, making sure I'm avoiding the zipper teeth the whole way down, and finishing with a back stitch. So that's my zip all attached to my outer and my lining. I've trimmed my corners, given it a good press, and this is the result. So super happy with this. So now that my zip is attached to my outer and my lining, I'm ready to finish my hems. And for this dress, I've decided on a double folded hem. So to do that, I'm just folding that raw edge in underneath by about half of my hem allowance, pressing, folding again by the same amount and pressing. And I'll finish that pressing and pin that hem up off camera. I'll do exactly the same with the lining, which you can see here. And ready to stitch. So starting at that centre back seam, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, trying to hug that inner crease edge the whole way around, pivoting at my corners, and finishing with a back stitch. That's my outer hem complete. And for the lining, exactly the same thing again. Starting at that centre back seam, trying to sew as close to that inner crease edge as I can get, and finishing with a back stitch. So both my outer and lining hems have had a good press, and this is the result. And with that, this little dress is complete. So I have my neckline and armholes all nicely enclosed with my lining. I've added a little thread loop and button to the back neck. I've got that nice bit of ease going into my waist piece. Got those gorgeous diagonal seams at the bottom of my skirt. That handkerchief design at the edges. From the back, same thing at the bottom. That nice waist piece in the centre, my centre back zip, all nicely enclosed. And from the inside, everything nicely tucked away. Super happy with how this looks on the inside. This is what it looks like on. I am so happy with how this has turned out. I love the neckline, I love that it's nice and soft. I love the shape of the bodice and that gorgeous curved waist. Of course that handkerchief hem, so it just gives a basic shape like this something a little bit different. And if you've been following along over on Instagram, you will have seen the inspiration for this one. I think the only difference between mine and the inspiration is that mine is fully lined and it has a waist seam, but apart from that I think it's very similar. Love how this turned out. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you find it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, if you've not yet subscribed please do and I shall see you on Friday. Until then I hope you have a fantastic week, bye folks! <laughs>